Greetings my friends, how are you doing? This is Zed from Zed Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. So today I've come to see a friend of mine, Ellie of Wood Wool Willow, at her abode here in West London. Ellie, how are you doing? Hiya, <laughs> fine. So, Ellie were, and myself were introduced a while ago by a mutual friend, Deborah Shinabley Morell. Yeah. Uh, now, Deborah and Ellie are part of the same spoon club meetup, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, the Highgate Spoon Covers Union. That's it, yeah. Northwest Line. It's a very posh union, I must say. <laughs> yes, we only uh, invite the select few. <laughs> I'm sorry, you can't come. <laughs> so, speaking to Deborah, Deborah was speaking really highly of Ellie, and he was like, she was like, yeah, you've got to check out her work, which I did a while ago when I first filmed with uh, uh, Deborah. So I looked online and I thought, wow, you're doing some really, really cool work. Thank you. And what I liked about you is your, so your trade name is Wood Wool Willow. Mm -hmm. And as obviously is in the title, you specialize in those three disciplines, yes. don't you? Yeah. So with the wood, you specialize, would I say you're, in right, you're specializing in spoon carving? Pretty much, yes, yeah, yeah. And with the wool, what is it you do in terms of the wool? Um, it's it's uh, made up knitted jumpers, so right. um, very much um, sort of make them up as a go along jumpers, just. Is, is this one you knitted yourself? Yeah, 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 yeah. so it's just sort of sit and watch rubbish telly and knit, it's cool. That's nice. it. I, I need that excuse. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've seen some of her wall actually off camera as I come down today to film. You do some really, really lovely wall Thank work. You. Thank really, you. really. I nice. like um, pattern and colours. So this is actually. I thought today the pattern might shout out a bit too much. So right. I, I put something uh, a little calming on today. <laughs> um, but I, it's it's pattern and texture and colour. And and you'll see that in some of the spoons as well and the baskets. Um, I, I've, really hard to do things plain and simple. And in terms of the willow, so you're also a willow basket maker as well. Uh, traditional basket maker. I just feel a bit blue peterish about this. I happen <laughs> to have one here, a couple here. Um, but these are actually, they happen to be outside drying at the moment and they just happen to be here. Um, so I'm a traditional willow basket maker, yeah. So how long have you been doing the basket making for? Um, a lot of people ask me that. I, I think I did my first course probably about 10 years ago. Um, a weekend course, like a lot of people do. So a lot of people I'm meeting um, did basket making at school. If they're a, an older generation like me, we we would have done basket making at, often at primary school. Oh, right. I, I never did basket no, making at school. Uh, no, as soon must as, have yeah, it. yeah, and it's such a shame because it's um, it sat latently in my head for all those years. And right. then I, I did a, a weekend course, and then I did a number of courses when I had the time, odd weekends, if there was a particular um, skill that I wanted to learn. So I'd go down to the Somerset Levels, which is right. the traditional willow growing area, and, um, and and do a course, spend a weekend doing a course there with other lots of other basket nerds, and then um, I became more full time more recently. Oh wow! So this is what I want to touch on to next is so you were working full time nine to five beforehand mm -hmm. in a separate profession. Yeah. And you transitioned, was it prior to the lockdown you transitioned? It, it, How did that work out? <laughs> Officially, it was the week of the lockdown. Go Officially, on. Yeah, literally, <laughs> very uh, confusing timing. So I had, um, the lockdown was in the March, wasn't it? Mid, mid, it March was the around that 20 time. First, something like that and um, I had uh, taken a six month unpaid leave from work in the October so I was due back in the March um, but I, I luckily I, I, I fought and won redundancy so that oh. kicked in um, the week we went into lockdown. Gosh! So um, best laid plan so the plan was that I knew redundancy could have been on the cards from about January so it took a bit of engineering to get it in. I'd worked I'd done my job for about 11 years, so I knew that right. there would be some money coming out. And, I, and the plan was that the redundancy money would keep me going while I was getting the business established. Right. And of course, <laughs> bad timing, we went straight into lockdown. <laughs> so, mm, OK, well, that's no classes, no markets, no sales. Mm. Um, so we, but it, it, it was good for me because it gave me a chance to just get my head down and consolidate what right. I was doing. So, um, yeah. and. I probably had one of the nicest lockdowns because I was on my allotment every single day oh, um, yes. with all of my community on, on the allotment. So we were we were going out, we were doing a nine to five 
because we were all on the allotment, all meeting each other, all being outside, being safe and, 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 and just enjoying. We had a beautiful early spring and a really warm spring and, and allotments have never looked so good. I visited the allotment previously. Deborah was kind enough yeah. to take me down uh, the last time I was with her. Oh, me. I put hers, um, yeah. And man, the, 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 the plots are amazing, the yeah. allotment. So, yeah, yeah hers, hers is so different to mine and it's just beautiful because um, from hers, it's, it's, it's on the hills and all you That's can right. see, you wouldn't think that you're anywhere in London. Mine, I'm, I'm nearer Heathrow, so right. it can be, can be quite noisy, but it's a very, very big site and it's a really eclectic site. It's right. really, really eclectic. And I, I always say to people it's um it's a huge empire with lots of tiny little kingdoms i like that i'm gonna steal that line you know <laughs> <laughs> so kind of fast forward now so you're teaching and obviously you're crafting full-time now yeah. in all those three disciplines yes. so in this specific visit what i've come down to sue is with ellie's kind permission is as i'm always curious about other people's processes for what it is that they do um ellie is very kindly going to be showing her process from start to finish on how she carves a standard eating spoon now unless i'm mistaken is this the first time you're showing this on video yes no pressure <laughs> 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 so we're going to be looking through that. Now here's how the video is going to be panning out. If you look in the, in the timeline below this video, you will see different timestamps for different sections of this video. That is designed that should you want to jump to a particular section moving forward, you can do that by clicking on that timestamp below. Also in the description below this video, the timestamps are also mapped out there. Now YouTube has a very cool feature. If you click on the actual time part on the left hand side, it will jump straight to that section of the video. What these videos are designed to do, including the one I've come today to film with Ellie, is a resource for you that be, be you a complete beginner to intermediate, even advanced, that you use this as a reference material. So here's what we're gonna do in this particular video. We are first and foremost, after this section here, we're gonna look at some examples of Ellie's carvings, of the different utensils that she makes. And then we're gonna get straight into the process. We're gonna start off with a raw piece of wood, and we're gonna go through all the way till the end where we have a finished spoon. And then we're gonna to touch on at the end a few tip, you know, uh, uh, of the processes that Ellie uses for the finishing of her spoons in terms of oiling, drying, etc. So Ellie, with your kind permission, I think we'll get started. Yeah, let's crack on. So for, without further ado, guys, I hope you enjoyed the rest of this video where Ellie of Woodball Lillo is going to be teaching you how to carve a spoon. So Ellie, we're looking at a small selection of your spoons here. Yep. And I stress a very small selection. I know you've got lots more stashed away in baskets. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to talk us through a little bit about what we're looking at here? So mm. maybe starting off at the yep. top with the salad service. Yeah, so salad service is, is kind of like entry level wooden spoon for a lot of people that don't know about spoons and spoon carving. So quite often people say, oh, have you got any salad service? So um, yes, I have. And um, I like to do the, the lettering on them, so if you can say eat your greens. This is carved in, in Rowan that came, that was a tree cut down from the back of my garden, which, and it was just a beautiful bit of wood. And it sat in my garden for ages um, after I'd carved the first bit, and I thought it would be completely ruined. It's just really nicely spotting, so it was a lovely, lovely bit of wood. And then moving on from there. Um, and this is cherry. Um, I think it might have been an ornamental cherry because it was as hard as rock. Um, just a nice, um, again, nice cooking spoon. So again, for people that don't use um, wooden spoons for eating with, it's kind of like entry level is, oh, wooden spoon. But again, with, with the lettering, it makes it into um, something special. And I like to try and, if anybody else can think of um, spoon type puns to put on spoons, then perfect, please do. That one's um, coal roast. So yeah, and I like to, um, I like to work on the lettering. I mean, my, the lettering um, is inspired or, yeah, I was inspired by David Fisher from um, when we uh, at Spoonfest when he came to Spoonfest a couple of years ago, and he's such a lovely, lovely, lovely man. And his his approach was just very, very beautiful, very, um, really simple and really inspiring. So we're moving on to the final piece over here. Yeah, starting off on the bottom row. So this one. Um, it's a really humble little cooking spoon, but it feels nice. You've got that nice. Um, 
normally <laughs> it just feels nice and I made I made a spoon um, out of a really rough bit of wood that my neighbour was cutting um, was cutting a plum tree down in her plot on her allotment and um, I made a spoon a bit like this and it's my favourite spoon and I, I say to people um, they're curious about the whole wooden spoon thing and I say well don't you when you have a wooden spoon pot next to the cooker and there's full of your spoons that you use for cooking isn't there one that you always grab that's your favorite what stirring spoon and they say oh yes and so that's that's my favorite spoon it might not be everybody's but it feels nice and then um kind of like a a bigger serious version for lots of serious people making some big big pots of serious food um this is um Tree of Heaven that um, is a, quite an invasive species and came from Barnes Common. So a lot of the wood that I choose um, uh, is local. So it's local to where I live and it's quite important to me that, that the wood is, is uh, as far as possible from, from the area. So when the, um, the rangers that manage the site are cutting anything down that they think is useful for me, they'll, they'll give me a shout and I'll go and pick it up. Um, so that's, yeah, that's... That's from Barnes Common. Can't even remember where it is. That's birch. That didn't come from Barnes Common because I don't get much birch. It's not a lot in West London. <laughs> so a little cherry scoop, just plain simple little scoop. Yeah, just what it says on the tin. And again, more more lettering. I mean, if you'd like, I can show you how to do some lettering later. Do you know what? If if that's that's very kind of it's something I've not covered before. Uh, but maybe in the future on a separate video, yeah. that would be awesome for you yeah. to show. Yeah, because um it's, yeah, if you're going to do lettering, it will, to a degree, dictate the shape of your spoon, especially the handle. So it's, there's a lot of bits to consider. This nice, simple butter knife does what it says. Butters, I like a lot of butter on my toast. Um, so some coal rosing. So I like, uh, not all of my spoons are decorated. I think I've put more, more, more decorated spoons out here. Um, but I like to just do quite simple freeform um, patterns on, on the spoon. So something that doesn't take a massive amount of planning out, something that I can do sort of relatively quickly. And I use um, cinnamon. I find it, it's, it's less messy than, than the others. Oh, so um, you prefer that then mm, over coffee? Mm. I, I, I once did soot and it was grim it just <laughs> everything went black and it was just horrible and I had to spend ages scraping scraping the spoon back and I, I love coal rosin it's so magic you've you've incised the mark and then by the time you put um, the cinnamon on you can see a bit of something and then magically when you put the oil on it just lifts the color and you can see this beautiful etching um, so next one is a bit of cherry that's from I think that's from Barnes Common again and and I call these my hobbit spoons so they're um, they're quite popular. Not necessarily practical to have all the moss on, but it, it's just lovely. It's just really nice. But you can only do, you can only keep the um, bark on the wood if it's. It needs to be relatively thin, and it needs to be in the winter when the saps. There's no sap in it, so it won't slide off. Because sometimes you can spend ages working on a spoon only for the the whole of the the bark to just slide off. Um, and then um, chip carving. So. We've got three three examples of, of chip carving. Um, so something really, really, really simple. Doesn't have to be complicated. If it's the the usual phrase of when you're doing something very simple, it has to be done very well, very, very cleanly. Um, so I've just made a really simple, clean handle on that one to carve. And just a you know, it's a nice a, a nice little dessert style spoon. Um, this this is more chip carved doodling so I'll probably there's no particular plan when I when I start I'll I'll draw some draw some lines on draw some triangles on and then I'll just build the pattern from there so I pro probably started with absolutely no no notion of what was going to happen and then just thought well maybe I need to add a bit more here and a bit more there and a bit more there so it, it's quite an organic process um, there'll be a little, you know, there will be some drawing to help plan it out because you, you know, you want it to look um, uh, symmetrical. Um, but other than that, yeah. And then um, another really simple one, but I just love the way that the we had the the, the heartwood and the sapwood going on, so it's just enhanced with the um, with the chip carving there. 
So just to recap then with the chip carving called Rosin, you typically go quite freestyle, don't you? Um, yeah, I, it's, I think my motto in life is, is make it up as you go along and never, never repeat. So I think um, with, with the baskets, with the jumpers and with the spoons, um, unless, unless there's something really, really specific or something really simple like the teaspoons, they more or less follow a pattern, but they're just, um, just purely because they're just little bits of odds and sods of wood that I've got left over. But by and large, there are very few times that you'll see two spoons the same. And last but not least, the spoon at the end. Yes, yeah, so um, I think this is the kind of thing that we're going to be carving today. So this is a really um, lovely piece of apple wood that's um, come from Barnes Common. Um, the, the tree guys there rang me up um, a couple of weeks ago. And I hadn't it had been sitting in the garden. I hadn't actually um, broken into it and carved it. And when I did, it was, it was really nice. So I'm keeping it really simple. The, the, the plan will be that... Um, I think it's more or less dried out now. When it's completely dry, I'll um, cold rose it and it would be really nice to put some apple blossom and some apples and some apple leaves on it. So I'll work, I will design it, it will be drawn, you know, I'll work on a, a drawing uh, and then transpose that on, but it, it, it's not going to be hard and fast. I'll kind of make it up as I go along to a degree. Um, so the plan will be, it looks very, very simple, but the, the, you know, in a way that this is really, really simple. The coal raising will speak for itself. Okay, um, well, this is a, a very stinky bit of um, apple wood because I've just taken it out of a, a stale <laughs> willow soaking tank because it happened to be in there. Um, don't know what it's going to split like, so let's just see. Let's just see. Mm. Yeah, I think that will work. Is that looking good, yeah? Yeah, we'll get something out of that. So this is um, just a really, really cheapo Wix Wilco axe. And you can see, if you look there, how it's been bashed. And I know a lot of everybody else uses a big wooden mallet. Um, I couldn't find anything and it's only a rubbish axe so I just use that and a very ancient um, coal hammer and it it works for me um, but yeah so my the axes that I've got um, I've got a classic um, wood tools axe and this is the one that I use um, for teaching so it's just a classic um, wood tools that's perfect really nice comes incredibly sharp um, and then this is um, this is an axe that I made with Nick Westerman, so he doesn't make, I um, don't think he makes any axes now. I made it over at the Greenwood Guild about three years ago. It's quite the most terrifying thing I think I've ever done. It was truly scary two days. Um, so when I made it, the, I, the beards were very, very, very pronounced, really, really pronounced. And it um, taken me a couple of years to sort of think, right, I just want them taken down a little bit. Um, so I found a, a, a knife um, grinder who, who does a lot of chef's knives and things and grinder. So I went to see him and um, explained what I wanted and drew on how much I wanted it taken down. And I said, oh, well, while you're doing it, can you reprofile it? Because, uh, you know, it was full of nicks and it hadn't been properly, properly sharpened for a good um, two and a half years. So he rang me up a couple of days later, very proud. Yes, he'd sharpened it and I could come and pick it up. And when I picked it up, it was a disaster. He'd sharpened it with bevels, with really round bevels on it. So it looked, the profile of it was like this. Right. So while I was trying to axe, you know, you want to be able to get your axe flat in there like that. And because it was beveled, I had to bring, I had to bring the axe right through, right round like that. So I was axing like that. And it was, it was hopeless. It was absolutely hopeless. So lovely, lovely Sean Hellman sorted it out for me and I sent it down and two days back, it came back. Oh, nice wow, and nice. Sharp. So um, yeah, it, I think it ended up being the most expensive sharpening I've ever done because I had to get it done <laughs> twice. But, yeah, word of warning, when you, if you do take your, your ax anywhere to get ground. Oh, look, sorry, there's a big magpie up there. What's he doing? What is he doing? 
Oh, that's crazy. Sorry. <laughs> I was completely sidetracked. Anyway, um, yeah, um, just be really, really specific. If they're not axe, if they're not carving axe grinders about how you want it profiled, don't assume that they know what you're talking about because a flat ground is clearly something quite alien to them. Um, yeah, so that's my a snippet, a snippet for the day. Um, so just have a look here. We'll do that one. So um, my, I, I, as I said, I like to carve with what I've got. I don't want to be running around and trying to find only only certain types of wood. Um, it's make make the best of what you've got. And um, and because I want to carve um, with local wood. Um, I have to, that's, that's how I have to approach it. Well, that's what I've got, so that's what I've got. So I've got a lot of willow um, as well. So it's either willow or apple. I've got some very, very hard cherry and, and it um, hasn't been much fun, so I've given that a rest. So all I'm gonna do is just take a little bit off and see, see what I've got. Small tip, I've got a box there and I can sweep all the crud into the box as I'm carving. That's a very cool thing, I like that. <laughs> Just happens to be there, but yeah. Um, so that's that's what I've got. This has got quite a thick um, bark on, so if I just remove the bark it'll help me see what what wood I've at, I'm actually dealing with. But you can see it's it's very it's very thick bit, but there's enough in here. Okay, so I think what we'll do is probably have the bowl this end and the handle this end. So I'm just going to very roughly um, axe it out. Um, we'll just get a, a, an approximate shape, and then I'll probably. Um, do some drawing on it. Can you see what it is yet? No, not quite. Um, but because I've got that nice bit of heartwood there, I'd like to try and keep it, um, just so we've got a little bit of colour going on. Um, we, might, we might be able to. So I've got a knot there, and I think it comes out there. Don't know. We'll see what we see what happens. Might work. Let's see. So uh, I know a lot of people when they come to putting the neck in um, will come down and, and, and use a saw and I really don't have much success at all because I always end up sawing too far in, always end up sawing too far in. So I always do, I always ax it, always ax it. Um, and that was from Jojo Wood, so I did her, I did a preface course with her and very, the, the way that she the way that she carves a spoon is, is brilliant. It's so simple and ergonomic. And, it, and she, what she's doing is she's working all the time. She's working with the smallest facets possible when she's axing. So rather than carving great facets all the time, she's just working with the with the narrowest facet that she can. And it's a much simpler. Um, it just seems a much a much more sensible way of doing it. So butt that up against there and put something something like that but always checking 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 whereas if I'm sawing it's very easy to just um, go too far so I want that and it's better to underdo it than overdo it okay and then a bit of, this is Anna Cassily, dainty axing. 
she was very into dainty axing. So as everybody knows this bit is the crucial bit because if my my axe slips I'm going to go straight the way through and give a walloping crack there. So just very very gently bump cut and really really dainty axing. And pull it pull the axe away. Oh, walloped it. Hopefully that's okay. Okay, so it looks as rough as anything at this, at this stage. Um, but you can see something's happening. It's kind of looking sort of spoonish. Okay, so what I'll probably do now is, is um, halt, the, halt the axing and now I'm going to do some drawing on. So that what I want to start to do is to make sure that it's... Um, it's as symmetrical as I can make it. So I'll draw a centre line and then I'll just pencil line it um, and work out a rough, sh you know, as good a shape as I can get in there. Um, so I'm just very, it's fairly, it's not going to be completely what the end, the final spoon will look like, but it will be more or less based on this. The, um, the main reason that I like to do it this way is um, just to get just to get the symmetry. Um, so is that a pencil stub? <laughs> yeah. Now who was it? It was somebody... Um, who's the lovely, lovely Swedish lady that does the little animated cartoons? Um, and she was carving the last spoon fest that I was at and all her pencils were little stubs that had been put into into carved tops like this. Oh god, what is her name? She was just really, she was the loveliest person ever. Um, but yeah, that's what she did and they, and they were all um, beautifully painted. She does um, a lot of painting on the spoons and everything, one of the tutors there. So um, yeah, it's, and it's a really nice... <laughs> it's nice is, is that um, Anya? Anya, yes. yes, yes. Oh. Um, she's amazing. She is just beautiful, and she had that um, enormous sort of dragon stick holder thing that she um, hung her bags over, so I could sat on her shoulder. So anyway, so yeah, that's it was from her, and I got that. I haven't painted it. So th this is a very knackered um, old um, tape measure that um, got dropped in a cup of coffee and never never worked again so it would never retract into the tape measure so um, I just chop it up and it makes quite a good um, bendy ruler because um, I lost I lost my bendy ruler and I didn't want to buy any more plastic so that kind of does the bendiness so that sort of works so yeah um, so we've got this area here I don't know let's see let's crack on and see what happens it might be absolutely terrible it might actually add something quite quite interesting. So I tend to, I'm just going to do really quite a simple spoon so the um, uh, the join at this point would, I'll do a square one rather than a, a round or, or anything fancy because I, what I want to do is be able to um, have all the decoration involved on the on the handle here because this wood I think is going to be lovely to coal rose might might even do some chip carving on it so I think we don't need we don't need too much going on down this end um, if that's going to be decorated on that end so um, when I'm drawing drawing on um, it's just getting as much symmetry as I can and I tend to start big so I draw on my spoon bowl reasonably big in the knowledge that it could end up quite a lot smaller. I was car when I carved the other one of these, as I was axing um, the front, a whole whole lump fell off. And b b but because the um, spoon bowl was quite big, I, it just it was fine. There was enough material there that I could I could redraw it. So um, that's that. So I'm just going to take um, take a centre measurement here. So a centimetre, centimetre, and uh, so again, I'll I'll draw this I'll draw this straight for now. And when um, when I come to carving it, I might want to change what I'm doing and 
you know, I can I'm, I can bring the end round or yeah, carve it big and then it gives you a few a few options. So I don't really need to take that much off there. That's that's fine. So I've got there's a bit of a knot there. This sprout here, which comes out here, who knows? Could be quite interesting. Okay, so I'm going to get a bit of um, work on a bit of the profile around here, um, and then I'll start to bring to bring the crank down. I'm going to leave um, leave the front of the spoon on for as long as I can because what what happens you do a lot of this, and if you take the front of the spoon down at this stage, you can end up sort of manking it up a bit. So I'll I can take some of the thickness off, but I'll. I want to leave a bit of material there and I'll take that off towards the end. But you can see it's already getting pelted, so um, So you always need to support the neck, so that's why that's digging in there, you can use the edge there, but if you were to axe there, this bit, the neck, is unsupported, so you could end up cracking your spoon in half here, so you always need to support it so that the opposite side is, is resting on something, um, it will, might save some tears later on. This divot here, and that's because of the that's because of the knot. So we'll see, we'll see. I might be on hiding to nothing. It's just taken some more out. It might it might be slightly kinder to leave that as it is and then um, work on it with a knife. So this is going to be. You can see what's happened. It's going to be relatively flat spoon. So um, take a bit more material down this side. But you can see how the front of the spoon is getting quite a bit of pressure on it at the moment. So if I'd taken it right down, I could well have um, had an accident and, and that might have broken off. Okay, so I'm just going to round these corners off a little bit. So now I'm going to put some crank in and this is where we might have some issues because of this knot. So once again you don't saw, you just act straight I in. I just axe, yeah. Well, say, as well as a saw would, I tend to take too much material off, it's also bone idleness. I've got to go back into the house to get the saw and I've got the axe in my hand already, so I might as well use that. Um, yeah, I kind of I want to just keep it as simple as possible and use as few to tools as possible, really. Um, but I, I find, yeah, I, I just find with the saw, I end up going too far down. Maybe I've got a nice new silky and it's a bit sharp, so I just get a bit carried away with it. So really, really, really carefully and just keep pulling, pulling it away because when you know, all being well, we're near the end of the spoon, we put this work in so we don't really want to undo it by um, fiddling around, eh, don't know, who knows, who knows, it could add interest or it could completely um, 
ruin the spoon. I don't know. Don't know. Don't know. Okay. So I'm going to. So, um, anybody that's ever done any um, life drawing knows that life drawing, or drawing from life, is probably 75% looking and 25% um, drawing. And I'd say spoon carving could be on a par. You're just constantly, constantly looking. So I'm, what am I looking for? You know, is this symmetrical? Is the main thing? Um, can I take anything off? It's not. It's you know, I, I've left this a lot thinner than I would normally like. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I might end up making the spoon bowl um, much smaller because I've, I've given myself very little wriggle, wriggle room, room here, um, and you know, I can see it's not. You can see it's not symmetrical here, so just can see what I can do here. Being careful because now I've taken the front of the front of the spoon off. I've got a big divot in there, so I kind of want to. I want to take as much material off as I can with the axe. Saves me much harder work with the knife. Um, I sometimes see um, uh, see some of the uh, blanks that, that are carved and I think gosh you're making a lot of work for yourself because there's so much there's so much thickness um, that, that's all going to be taken off with a knife and um, if I can I'd like to get 90% of, of the material off with an axe and that leaves just the final 10% the detail to be taken off with the um, with a knife. So I don't know how we're going to do. Let's, let's see. So it'd be nice to have some of this colour on here, but um, don't know, don't know. So the final bit is we're going to bring this down so that we've got the crank going on. Yeah. Let's muzzy it up a bit. So you're using like the... Uh the heel of the yeah, axe. Yeah, just, just sort of muzzy it up a bit and then it makes that extraction. Look at this. Mm. Uh, don't know, don't know. I'm just seeing if it goes down, how far it goes down to real wood because it's not coming out the back here. So it might, you know, we might hit proper wood once I've carved. <sighs> don't know, once I've carved down a bit, I can see some real wood there. So if I can carve down that far, we might be okay. Okay, so um, I think a lot of people would give up with the snotty knot like like that, um, but I don't know. It might be quite fun to see what happens. I have no idea. It might carve out nicely. It might carve out as a disaster. It might carve out um, and then really, really warp on drying. And I'm sure a lot of people would give up and say I'm a complete idiot to to even think about it. But um, Hey ho! Let's press on and, and see what happens. It's quite a nice experiment just to uh, just to find out about the wood. Um, I'm not I'm not that worried. There's plenty more wood, and I'll carve another one if it's if it's really horrible. So um, yeah, like most spoon carvers, I'll probably start start with the handle, get that into a kind of a feeling of where I want it to go. It's definitely not going to be straight like that. I think it'll I think it'd be nice to bring it bring it round like that um, and this might end up a completely different shape it might end up with a tiny little teaspoon who knows and um, we'll just see where it goes okay and with the knife that you're using mm. so this is um, uh, Nick Westerman so I have um, a 
feel like a bit of an advert. I've got these axe and three knives, um, but I bought them uh, quite a while ago. So I've got a um, straight knife and then I've got a little extra small finishing knife, which um, is even smaller than his normal finishing knives because I broke the tip off and um, he very nicely re-ground it for me. Um, so he took, so the tip broke off here and he re-ground the back down so that the um, blade edge was, was kept integral. And he took it down and it's a really, I love it. It's absolutely lovely and I have to remind myself not to use it for all my carving. And then I have, um, uh, I have a hook knife as, as well. Um, and you buy them as, um, you get them as blades and then you, you handle them yourself. So, um, so where are we? Oh yeah. So I'm just going to, so just start facing facing this off. As I say, I'm going to just do um, a very simple um, square edge in here. Um, so what I want to make sure is that this flows nicely down and into it. And because I I took the axing as tightly as I could in, hopefully there won't be too much um, to take off. Um, and when I'm doing this pull cut, I'm, I'm holding the knife really high up, really high up on the blade, really high up, halfway, more than. Um, I'm just pulling the knife around. So I want to keep a, a reasonable size keel on here um, because I'm, I'm taking, it qu taking it quite thin so it's got to have some strength somewhere so you either have the strength in the width or the strength in the depth um, and I'll go for a bit of strength in the depth but because I've got to dig down to get there I've got to bring that down there so yeah, all these little sort of micro thoughts that are going on in your head um, as your um, as you're carving. I'm trying to keep a little bit of this nice um, brown heartwood if I can. I might, it depends, I might have to take it back quite a bit. So all the time I'm looking, every time I make a cut, what is it in relation to the previous cut? And what is it in relation to the next cut? She smells quite nice now we've got rid of the smelly soaking water. That's quite pretty. Got a bit of a niche there, so don't know. Just be really careful trying not to take that back too much more because it just it's really pretty. Um, so I'll reduce the thickness sort of from the from the top end, from the front end, from the back end now. Because um, I want to do some decoration on it, I want to keep this reasonably flat. I don't want to take it too too rounded because it makes it much much harder if it's if it's really rounded and really bevelled to um, to work on it. The knife will, will slip off quite easily, so I want to keep it reasonably um, reasonably flat. So I'm just taking a little bit of a, a bevel off there. There's some lumps there. Get those off. Okay, I'm not too worried too much more now. I want to kind of work on this. It's roughly there um, and let's see, I think I think I'll bring it round a bit there. Um, when I'm nearer the edge, I'll 
do little micro chamfers um, around but I just want to keep I just want to start getting the basic shape now and you can see I'm taking this quite quite fine here quite narrow here okay so the back is not looking symmetrical at all so I'm going to start um, reducing some of the back and because I've got this knot here I'm going to have the grain is just going to go all over the place so who knows it might be um, the worst consideration I've ever done in the whole history of spoon carving ever 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 and I'll regret it but I don't know let's see this is apple wood and it's it's um it's very nice it's very close grained even um, even texture so I've got a divot there and that was because of the tear in the axing I'm not sure if you can see it and it's a tear in the axing so I'm, I'm gonna have to work around that because the um, the grain is just all over the place um, yeah it just keeps tearing Um, so I'm just trying to use the knife at coming it coming at it from different angles because the the grain is all over the place um, it's still there Um, so when I, I know a lot of people will work and do the whole profile, that's kind of like almost the first thing they do is do the whole profile, um, but I tend to do, especially the profile of the bowl, <clears throat> I tend to do that a bit later on. What I want to do is kind of reduce the thickness. Um, I want to start working on, on the, the back and the front of, of, it, of the spoon first. Um, because once I start to reduce the thickness, it's it's less effort because this is thinner and it's 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 less to carve. Um, yeah, it's just less. There's less material to have to carve. Um, yeah, I'll do. A, um, so I'll do. I'll reduce quite a bit the thickness. Not not all of it. You know, it's it's constant. It's, you know, you're constantly going back and redoing and redoing and redoing. But I'll just start to think about reducing. Yeah, you know, there's already less material there to and work because working um, right across the grain like that is is hard work. So the the less material that I've got to cut across the grain, as far as I'm concerned, the easier. So, I'm sure a lot of people would have given up and say I'm completely nuts trying to do this, not in the bowl, but hey ho, let's see. Okay. All right, so. I like those two little marks there, they look like little fir trees. Don't come out the front, so I don't know what that's about. Okay. Right, so. Now I'm going to work on the profile. So 
so remembering that it's quartiles and this quartile up to the top and this quartile this way up to the top this quartile and down to the base and that quartile down to the base oh the joys of living in a city there you go um and now so from this quartile down so it's still not quite I need to take some off here Okay, it's looking reasonably, reasonably symmetrical. <clears throat> so I've still got that divot there to think about. I think I need to get that out because it's going to dictate how deep I can make the bowl and the spoon. It'd definitely be a spoon for eating yoghurt, not runny soup. Okay, I think that's just about gone. I haven't left a lot of wriggle room here. I normally would want a bit more um, wriggle room. So I'm now looking to see what the profile's like, if that's um, symmetrical. So I need to take, I think I need to take a bit more off this side. Right, now the moment of truth. The scary bit. How far are we going to have to go before we hit any decent wood? Are we going to hit any decent wood? Um, so uh, this is a, a Robin Wood um, open uh, curve spoon knife, which I think I've started to use um, more and more last year so I'm just going to give it a quick strop. So this is the um, Hue and Hone sticky um, Oh, sticky sandpaper. Sticky sandpaper which oh, is great. Nice. <laughs> it's great but it's, you know, it's you have to throw it away. It's not very environmentally friendly because it's on sort of like a sticky back but it has been. So once I've used all this lot up I'm going to try and think through more permanent um, solution. So this is the 5,000, this is the 7,000 um, and then I'm just going to give it a strop. So I've got the strop on the suede but I'm, I'm not sure. I think it, I think it sort of digs in and we'll, and we'll do sort of like a, a, a tiny micro bevel so I tend to do it on the on a hard side. So again this is the uh, human home um, compound that I'm using on here. Um, but when I want to do a full a full sharpening, I'll take my knives back um, and I just went to Halfords. Are we allowed to say commercial names? We are, yes. <laughs> um, I went to Halfords and just bought um, a pack of their mixed um, grit paper. So it goes from 400 um, to 2000. So I go through, just go through all the all the papers and give it a good um, a good go. I need to use this, so just give this a quick go. So this um, 
I don't know if you know, but this is um, the curve. Um, a comparison of the hmm, doing well here. Um, so you've got two types of um, spoon knife. If anybody doesn't know, so um, on this one we're going to sharp. You sharpen it from from the outside edge. So you saw me sharpen it that way because the the bevel is on the outside edge. On one of these, I don't know if you can see on the camera, the bevel is on the inside, and this this side is the cutting side. So you don't sharpen the outside at all. You sharpen it from the inside. And, it's, um, and the, the beauty about these is that they're actually much, much easier to sharpen because you need, um, so I, I just use a dowel with, this is some 5,000 grit on it. And you make sure that this is completely flat in there and it sits, it sits on both, both edges and you just strop it backwards and forwards like that. It's much, much easier. It's much easier to sharpen because you don't have to worry about the angle so much as you do with these ones. Because as long as this is sitting flat, it's sharpening on that on that edge there. And then again, just a quick strop. And um, so the reason I'm using this is I want to get into. I want to get into there. I need to start taking as much of this material off as I think I can get away with. And so I'm sure a lot of people would have given up on this as soon as they'd seen the knot, but um, yeah, why? It might, might actually make something quite interesting out of it. It might be a complete disaster, but. Um, Yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, I think we're getting back to some, yeah, we've, we've certainly got some decent wood in there. Um, it might end up drying really interestingly when it dries. It might warp all over the place. It'd be quite fun. Um, I kind of like just um, going with the flay and, and not being overly precious about um, the wood that I'm using. And also, I'm just bone idle. I think I've done all the effort of carving, carving it with the axe. Um, but I'm sure a lot of people will be jumping up and down in their seats going, what? Why are you doing that? like that and it's kind of cool. Huh? Um. And it certainly makes the, the knot is very very hard wood. Um, it's not making life easy um, at this stage but So when you normally carve, do you carve kind of one spoon at a time? Do you have a few on the go? No, I, I can only do one thing at a time. I'm the same when I'm uh, knitting jumpers. Um, 
I can only do one jumper at a time. I know a lot of knitters will have four, five, six, sometimes nine knitting projects on the go and that fries my brain. I have to do one spoon until it's finished. That's why I like doing spoon carving because you can get it done in a couple of hours and it's done. So the idea, I know I've got three or four spoons axed out in there because when I, um, when I do the markets I always do demonstrations and um, so I'm always, uh, I, do, I do the axing at the markets because the axing is quite nice, it's quite theatrical and, um, and so I'll put the axed out spoons in a bag and I know that they're in there and they're bugging me, they're really bugging, they're sitting there just to finish me, finish me, so um, yeah, um, so definitely, definitely, definitely need to finish those and it's the same um, it's the same with baskets, but by and large baskets you always do just straight straight through um, while the material is, is pliable. Um, yeah. So we're getting there. Um, this is going to be quite, it'll be quite a, a nice fat spoon. Um, so at this stage it's just um, taking your tip, but always, always checking. You know, feel, don't look. Feel the depth, and I can feel there that it's actually, yeah, it's you know, it's enough to play with. It will be quite a, a fine spoon because it's apple wood. It's nice and hard. It's um, got a lovely close grain, so I can take it reasonably, um, reasonably fine. Um, but just be incredibly mindful. I think, I think I've only ever carved through a spoon once. Um, but I've certainly seen lots of other people do it. It's easily done because as you're working through a lump and you're working through a lump and you're working through a lump and you forget that actually there's nothing behind it. So... It's not, it's very, uh, it's really hard. It's quite interesting. Um, so I'm going to rework, um, rework the edge now. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, reprofile um, the edge now and tidy this up and then we have a tidy surface. You can see a bit more of what's, what's going on. So I, And then it's just um, redrawing, really, um, getting it tidied. So what I want to make sure is that um, these line up, just makes it um, look nice and neat. 
so that the two corners line up. So you can fiddle away forever with that. Now, if I didn't have this snotty knot on it, I might spend some time trying to do some really nice um, facets on the back here, but I don't, I, I need to be super, super, super careful because if I start working, I might take another um, chip out of it so I'm not going to do I'm not going to do too much of that on this spoon um, I, you know I might well do on, on others and uh, you know that's the thing every time you carve it depends on um, what's happening with the wood will dictate for me you know will dictate largely what's what's going to go on um, and that's the fun of it I don't don't get much fun if I'm just working to a um, a preordained template and it's going to be that and nothing else but that. So we're on? Yep. So just doing slightly more finishing cuts. Um, I might put this down and let it dry a bit and it's still very wobbly and wonky. Um, so do you typically let it dry a little bit before you do finishing um, cuts or? I tend not to, because once it's done, it's done. But then there's always that thing where you, you walk past it when it's sitting there drying and you notice something. So you then pick up the knife and then you find that it's three quarters of an hour later and you're still faffing around. So there's a lot of, um, yeah, there's a lot of, of faffing. And as most spoon carvers will say, you know, how do you know when it's done? because you could just go on and on and on. And the beauty about um, knitting and basket making, it's complete when it's complete. But with spoon carving, you can keep, um, you can keep taking away. So you don't knit an extra arm or? No, <laughs> but uh, you know, knit, knitting and basketry are both the same. You're adding and you add until it's complete. Whereas spoon carving is taking away and you can just keep taking away and taking away until you've got a matchstick left. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's very, it's very, very easy. And um, I'm just, so I might, I might put this to one side. What my consideration, because of the snotty knot, um, I'm, I'm leaving it not too, not too thin because I think it, it could well walk all over the place when it's, um, when it's drying. And the thinner it is, the more likely it is to um, walk, all, walk all over the place. So I'm just, um, yeah, I'd, and the, the knot is quite tough, so as you're working at the knot, you end up taking material around it off, um, and it, it's kind of got as thin as I want, I, I dare go really, there. Um, so I won't, yeah, probably won't take much more off, um, off there. So that you then have to decide, well, what, you know, how, how do you want your edge to be? Do you want a, a sharp facet? Do you want a nice roundy bevel? Um, I tend to go for a slightly sharp um, facet and then rework it and it ends up being a, a roundy bevel. Um, so a lot of this could, could all be tidied up um, a bit more and it's constantly looking um, for the symmetry, what bits are sticking out, how's it sticking out. So I'm just going to now, this is the the bit that all spoon covers like doing the sort of the little micro chamfers on the on the edge here, making the curly whirlies. Um, I 
And so I want to keep the surface relatively flat because if I'm decorating, um, I want to have a reasonably flat, flat surface. Um, so I've still got to decide what I want to do with the top here. So I think I'll just... Um, Should we go for a little pommel? Maybe a pommel. Little things like this, they're tiny, but you can go over and over and over and over them because if they're not um, pretty and they're not symmetrical, there's no point in doing them. And um, I probably don't want to bore you with me doing it at this stage, but I'd, I'd, I'd work on that quite a bit more because it's, it's very lumpy and it's not terribly attractive at this stage. Um, but yeah, there's a lot more work to be done um, to be done it in that to to bring the shoulders in um, nicely, but yeah, it's 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 coming on, but it's not it's nowhere near there yet. Um, but I can work on that a bit more um, later. Just wanted to give you an idea of kind of where I think it would be quite pretty. So it, it still feels a bit. This handle still feels really really thick now. So it's funny, you can get to what you think is the finished spoon and then actually, in light of everything else, it just seems wrong. He want, wants to feel nice in the hand. I and mean, this apple wood is lovely. It's so um, silky smooth. Um, it, it feels really nice. And you, you know, luckily it's quite dense, so you can get away with taking it um, reasonably thin. Yeah, that feels better.
yeah I need to I need to work on that quite a bit more it's just not sitting very prettily at the moment so you would typically let that dry a little bit and then I think I think so I need to sort of maybe go away and have a cup of tea and have a look at it um, is, is that a very specific British technique <laughs> yeah cup of tea <laughs> um, when uh, when uh, uh, when I used to do um, figure drawing another really good method and I'm I'm wondering if it would work with spoon carving is um, pick your piece up and look at it in the mirror and it's literally like looking at it with fresh eyes. Oh, I'm interested. I've not yeah. heard that before. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I can see there's something not going on here. It's not symmetrical. It's not sitting right. And it's just, it's not looking, you know, it looks a bit lumpen at the moment. It needs, if you're going to have it there, it needs to be pretty. It needs to be nice. Um, and it needs to be nicely done. And it's not at the moment. It's very, very lumpen. It just doesn't, um, uh, yeah, it's just not, not sitting very nicely there. So I will, um, yeah, definitely, it's, it's, it's definitely a cuppa. Ooh, we could have a, a chocolate Swiss roll as well. Just, yeah, keep our sugar levels up. Um, so yeah, it's... So at this stage, basically, it's just delicate finishing it's touches. Now. It's lots of finishing touches and it's sort of, you know, I can see there's some sort of lumpy bits sticking out and I'm, you know, so you can faff around for ages and ages and ages um but on the on the whole it's, on the it's whole kind of, it's, 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 it's there and it's you know it's i didn't know what i was going to end up with when i started it it's kind of ended up as something um you know i was fairly sure it was going to be uh an eating spoon i think you can eat from it i think it would work um but you know i didn't know what shape bowl it was going to finally be I could make a sort of a square or one um, I wasn't entirely sure what what was going to go on the handle so um, I could, you know for me that I quite like that so that's what it's ended up being you know I didn't necessarily think it was going to be quite like that when I started so um, sometimes if you're given a commission it, it needs to be something really specific um, it's so much more of a chore because um, I can't do what I want to do and just, you know, as, um, just want to get this edge nice and thin. Um, yeah. Who was it? There was um, a famous artist and you say, take a line for a walk and you're kind of taking a piece of wood and a, and a knife for a walk and just sort of seeing where you, where you kind of end up. That's, that's part of the fun for me. Um, never, never quite sure, and it's you know it's it's a completely um, dynamic process. But I certainly think you know if you carve, if you're used to carving more, uh, you know very similar similar spoons in similar shapes, sort of more production carving. Each each time you do it is is unique because you're contending with different. Um, different elements in the wood, different marks that the axe has made. So all the time it, it's, it's a dynamic process and I think that's why um, that's why it's so meditative. That feels a bit, feels a bit nicer in the hands now. Um, kind of looks cool when you've got these really really square square facets but um, it doesn't look, it doesn't feel nice and I kind of, you know, the whole the whole thing about the spoons is tactile. When people come on the stall, the first thing they do is they pick it up, and it's the feel of it. And um, yeah, I mean, there's, uh, you know, I'd, I'd probably do some more faffing around. Um, I'm just really intrigued to see what's going to happen there. Just quite intrigued. So, it's like the eye of Sauron. Yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> and I, you know, I think for a lot of um, uh, a lot of people would would have rejected that wood. And I might, in the end, you know, if it ends up drying really, really, really warped. But um, um, it also makes it quite interesting. So we've still got the little fir trees on the back as well. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll play around a little bit more. But I think to all intents and purposes, it's cup of tea time. Mm -hmm. 
So there you have it, my friends. That is a wrap for this video. Ellie, thank you so much. You're welcome. It's my it was pleasure. really nice to see your entire thank process. You. It's the first time I've seen it as well, uh, to see your process. It was always interesting seeing people, no matter how many people I film, everyone mm. has their nuances, their little techniques, yeah. and little kind of flow yeah, in yeah. terms of kind of what they yeah. do. Um, as we kind of mentioned throughout this video, typically, obviously, you would just take a lot longer. You would wait elements for it to dry before mm. you kind of completely finish it off. Mm. So obviously, we can't show a fully, fully completed spoon. But these videos are designed more so to show the actual process itself. Mm. Okay, so how you start off, then how you kind of approach each stage, yeah. going, going kind of stage by stage, mm. all the way through to the end. Um, so guys, uh, a reminder on a couple of things. Um, as I mentioned before, below you have a breakdown of all the individual sections. So you just refer to the timestamp either on the timeline of this actual video or in the description below. Um, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put a links below, two links actually. Number one, I'm going to put a link to Ellie's website. And on there, so you have a lot of information about all the three facets that you do with so spoon carving, yeah. with willow work, and with wool. Wool, yeah. maybe less so? Wool, wool less so because um, it's primarily a shop, and uh, rarely, if ever, sell any of the jumpers because they take so long to knit and <laughs> <laughs> get around to it. Um, but yes, yeah, so the items are there for sale, um, any up and coming workshops and classes that I've got coming up, um, information about sort of private workshops and things and a little bit about me. So you mainly teach here around kind of West London-ish? Yes, yeah. And you do, is it private tutoring and or groups? Groups, um, yes, yeah, so um, both basketry and, and spoon, I, I'll teach a maximum of six people um, and some will be through organisation, so it might be a particular venue says, oh, can you come and teach us spoon carving right. and I'll, I'll do it there. So anything that I'm, I've got listed, I'll, I'll put, on my, I put on my website. So on the website, like I said, you will be able to see the plethora of things that you've got going yeah. on. And honestly, her work is amazing. We spent quite a bit of time this morning, <laughs> loads. loads of time this morning, looking through the whole array of basketry and woolen work and obviously the spoon carvings that Ellie does. So once again, a link below to Ellie's website. I would highly recommend you go check that out. You can see a lot more in detail of the work that Ellie gets up to. The second link I'm going to put below in the description is to Ellie's Instagram. And Instagram, obviously, you're quite active, aren't you? Um, uh, it's generally, it's more of an update, you know, what, what I'm doing that particular day or okay. what's gone on in the last sort of few days. So, um, it, you know, it alternates between um, growing stuff on the apartment, baskets and spoons and woolly things. But it's, it, tends to, it tends to be around about that sort of area. She's an avid allotment here. <laughs> you know, really, really knows her stuff. Yourself and Deborah are like my two go-to people. Yeah, know, yeah. For yeah. all allotment stuff and growing. You can talk spuds to us for ages. <laughs> We'd be I'm fine. A, I'm atrocious at growing <laughs> stuff. Everything I try to grow just dies, you know. I've got to give my mum's aloe vera and I've almost killed the thing. So uh, Deborah gave me some tips and tricks. I'm yeah. bringing it back to life now. So. <laughs> Thankfully, man, we've got to send out some thoughts and prayers to my aloe vera plant. Um, so like I said, links below to Ellie's website and her Instagram profile. Um, as we got speaking throughout the video, mm. um, we had, like I said, like a couple of suggestions for maybe future videos. Yeah. One looking at the letter, letter carving. If that's something you guys want to see, do let me know in the description below. And as long as kind of Ellie's free and available, mm. then we can yeah, kind sure. of arrange something sure. uh, yeah. to do that. Um, and we're discussing some potential other videos as well. So guys, I really do hope you enjoyed this video. Ellie, a sincere thank you, thank you once again much. for your, hospi your hospitality while I'm down here as yeah. well. Um, so guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Links to everything below in the description. And as always, I hope whatever you're doing, you have a blessed day, a blessed week ahead. For myself, Zed Outdoors and Ellie of Wood, Wall, Willow. <laughs> we shall see you next time. Peace out. Bye.